Welcome back my fellow Hoi4 players. Today we shall look into the world of Führerreich. Yes, that's right, we're going to leave the world of Kaiserreich for a while and look into to the what if, what if mod. And today we shall turn the UK into a socialist nation wanting to export the revolution. With George Orwell, or as his real name, Eric Blair, in charge. But before we get into the video, I have to say that this is a submod for Führerreich called Imperial Nostalgia, which brings back many cut elements like Zapatos Labia and a few other things. I want to say this before the video, before anyone thinks that this is actually in base, yeah, base Führerreich, so nobody is confused. And with that, let's actually get into this wild ride. Ah, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. The world's superpower that spans across the entire world. And while things have been relatively peaceful as a peaceful after the Great War ended, things are starting to heat up again. And who knows, maybe the world hegemon might collapse. But Britain is Britain, so nothing of that magnitude will ever happen, right? Well, anyhow, it can't be a British playthrough if you George, uh, King George here does not die in the first days of the game, so you know the drill, Mr. Edward here shall become the next king of the Great Britain. And the first thing he does, of course, is to call off the bodyguards? Well, okay, I guess it's fine, this is Britain, everyone loves the king, so sure, we can call off the, call off the bodyguards, what could go wrong? Actually, a lot of things can actually go wrong, but in this case, since it's not related to the king, the king as India actually decided to go nuts and rebel. And you know, we could go and intervene to save the British Raj, or we could just lay back and do nothing. I mean, surely the British Raj has this thing under control, right? Oh, and also the, Af you know, the Afghanis actually intervened. I mean, there's nothing to worry about. I mean, it's just like the whole king affair. I'm sure he's fine. Oh. The king's dead, guys. Yeah, you know, maybe calling off the bodyguards was not the greatest idea after all. Well, in that case, I guess long live George VI. But damn, such a bad luck. Like, first the king is assassinated. And now the whole India disaster? Things can't get any, any worse than this, right? Right? Well, actually, no, things can actually get way worse as the London stock market has just crashed. And you know what this means? Economic disaster that means basically that people are starving on the streets. And because everyone who was in our sphere has just decided to break free. Well, in this case, we need to fix things or, if, or this might actually get out of control fast. And with this, the British global hegemony is no more. Oh well. But things don't stop there, as now people are marching on the streets? Wait, what? And now they're even uh, clashing with the police? And now they're even asking to reopen some industries? What do they think this is? The Union of Britain or something? The, bro the government shall not give in to these socialist demands. And if as things couldn't get any worse, now Indonesia has decided to revolt. Oh, but the situation in, in the home miles is getting much, much worse, with now a worker strike? And now they're even demanding, like, stuff for, f like, it's free? Nah, 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 break them up by force, boys. But these bloody socialists are not giving up. They, have, you know, they even have announced a general strike. This cannot continue. So, things have gotten out of hand with major rioting in major cities. Like, what is this? Are we sure we are 1937 and that we are not in 2020 or 2021? With protesters close, closing in on Westminster, we have no choice but to order the army to do its job and protect the government at all costs. Surely this will end the protests. As long as we have the army on our side, nothing can happen to us, right? Right? Huh, looks like we're fucked, <laughs> you know, protests and riots are one thing, but having the army revolting, yeah, now that's an actual big problem. 
with the um, with the army now revolting against the government itself, it looks like the only, this is only the beginning of something far, far worse than anything we have ever imagined. Considering all the events occurring in the home isles, the colonial garrison has returned home to the to quell the rebellion that's happening right now. Bad times are coming to the British Isles. And it seems with all of this happening, our boss Tempai has been cut off from the government and now it's up for grabs. Even with the colonial garrison coming home to the Isles, the dreaded day has come at last. The revolution is here, and as such, socialists from all sides in Britain have united to topple down the government. The British Civil War is here. Well, to be fair, it's probably like the 50th British Civil War, considering how they have a long track record of having many civil wars. Just like Mexico, actually. But that's besides the point. Ah! You know, this whole thing, the king thing, is not for me, so instead, BREAK THE CHAINS, MY COMRADES! Just as our great uprising has just begun, many elements from the British army have defected to our side, and as such, we must prepare our offensive to connect to London with Wales and Northern England. With the Civil War already on its way, we managed to catch the British Loyalists by surprise and made, it, and made headway into Central England. But this Civil War was messier than I thought, with Loyalists encircling many of my divisions and with me doing the same. It was a back and forward. At some point, I even lost London, but since it was a back and forward, London actually changed hands a lot of times. But after maneuvering my troops, I managed to encircle a lot of the loyalist troops and took London for the final time. And with it, it was only a matter of destroying the remnants of the army. Seeing the inevitable collapse, the reactionaries have decided to take to the harbors and started fleeing to the, the home isles and with them gone it marked the end of the British Civil War. Of course, many industries left as a result of the, a result of the revolution, ah, but who needs them? We only need the strength of the workers. Finally, with the revolution now over, we can now focus on deciding the future of Britain. We can go with the revolutionists who want to, who would have guessed it, export the revolution worldwide, the unionists who argue for more liberties and a more moderate stance on socialism and the world revolution, and the national socialists, and no, not the ones you are thinking of, who are just basically Stalinists. And you know, I think it's best we go with the moderation and offer more liberties as that's, that was one of the many reasons for the revolution, you know. Also with the United Kingdom now gone, the Americans thought it was a good idea to annex Canada a la 1812 style, but now even Mexico is getting in on the fun. 
It's an interesting development, but North American affairs do not interest us at the moment. But you know, that might be a point of interest in another video. And with the debate coming to a close, the Unionists have won. And fun fact, the event says that the new chairman uh, was someone else, but instead we have Eric Blair, aka George Orwell, in charge. But I prefer Blair, Blair so I'm not complaining. After a few months of reconstruction and rebuilding Britain, it's time to finally export the revolution to the world. And the first place to have the revolution exported will be Ireland. Ireland separated itself after the revolution, but you know, they must be liberated from their capitalist and reactionary overlords, so to Dublin we go boys. After a successful naval invasion in Ulster, the rest of the Republican army arrived and defeated the reactionary Irish forces. Another fun fact, you can see that some of, the division, some of the divisions are still called Royal Infantry and I really did not notice it until later and, and because of that I had to rename each single division uh, to Republican Guard or Republican Division, something like that. And let me tell you, that was clearly not fun at all. And as such, with Ireland defeated, it was time to liberate them under a socialist government in full. Ah, who am I kidding? We are British. As such, we shall keep Northern Ireland for ourselves. This would not be a British campaign if we decided to liberate the Irish in full after all. And you know, it may be best that I do not start my car for the foreseeable future because, well, you know. <laughs> But anyhow, it was now time to put an end to the Spanish Civil War that has been raging for many many years and finally put a responsible socialist government in charge. With the landings in Galicia being mostly unopposed, or actually just unopposed, this war was really just a walk in the park as the Spaniards had weakened themselves and wasted all the resources in the prior years. With the nationalists defeated, we just needed to make a quick visit to the king in Sevilla. And finally, with Spain now ours, now we just needed to liberate them as usual and... Wait, what? M monarchist Spain, but it's socialist? Huh? The, 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 Mosh, the Mon Bolsheviks are real! But right now, we can't worry about it, as the Second Great War has just started, and Mr. Dressler there has expanded way too much, so we have no choice but to intervene before they utterly defeat France and Italy. With the war finally being declared, a boys made the first landing in the Netherlands, but was quickly but the invasion was qu quickly halted as enemy of reinforcements arrived and tried to push the invasion back. But after sending another army to the Netherlands, we were able to break through the front lines and we pushed into Germany itself. With the British Republican Army making a headway into Germany itself, the Soviet bears smelled blood and declared war on Ukraine, which was under German oversight, so it seemed as Germany was destined to lose yet again. As the boys swept through, we had two objectives, one reaching Berlin before anyone else and second to cut off the German army in what was left of the Netherlands. Eventually the Dutch surrendered and soon Berlin was ours. The war was pretty much won, but we still had to occupy all of Germany before the Balkists decided to surrender.
After the peace deal, Europe looked like this. I decided to dismantle Germany and took the Netherlands while the Entente took Austria, Czechia, Slovakia and Poland and the Soviets just decided to take Lithuania and Ukraine. A Europe lived forever in peace after that. Of course that did not happen as this video is still running so after a few days after the war had ended and the peace deal had finally been signed the smelly French decided to declare war on me. So it was time to invade France and teach those smelly French a lesson. With the Normandy landings in effect the rest of the Republican Guard was sent to neutralize the threat across the channel. And with the fall of Paris, I just had to walk around France until they decided to capitulate. Later Belgium and the Rhineland capitulated and so the next target was Italy. But you know, the annoying thing about this mod is that Italy and France will retreat to their colonies and so I had to naval invade Libya just to capitulate Italy. And, you know, that should have been the end of the war, right? Well, wrong again, as Poland then all of the sudden just became a major and then Denmark became a major after that. So to avoid boring you with me having to capitulate both Poland and Denmark, why not just skip to a part where they surrender? <laughs> And so it was yet again time to redraw the borders of Europe. And such I decided to dismantle both France and Italy, just like it happened to Germany. Then I decided to give some states to the German uh, splintered states and finally released Africa, the African nations after a while, mainly because I just wanted to take a screenshot of that beautiful red empire. So, with the major European powers now defeated, it was now time to export the revolution to the non-socialist states of Europe. And what's that music I'm hearing? Is it the montage music?
Oh, and we can't forget about the British uh, loyalist exiles who fled to Egypt, so why don't we put them uh, put an end to their misery, right? But even after exporting the revolution, we're still avoiding a big issue. I'm talking about the Soviet Union. It's time to deal the Soviet split, split and unite our armies to finally export the revolution to the world. With the Soviets and every other socialist nation already in the fourth international, it's time to start the world revolution. But you know, since the game is already 1946, the performance is as you can imagine. So, um. One eternity later. And, well, I imagine that something like that would happen, I mean the decision is, it's called to start the world revolution, but declaring war on everyone else in 1946, yeah, that's not happening, chief. So that's basically the end of the video, I hope you really enjoyed this campaign, I actually will be covering other Führerreich campaigns in the future, and that's basically all for now, right? So, this was, I really hope you enjoyed the video, this was Defectus Expert, signing off.